Okay, the question is asking, if a relativistic effects are to be less than 3%, I guess by relativistic effect, it's referring to length contraction and time dilation. Um, the important thing here is this, uh, it's just uh, simply setting the value of gamma, the Lorentz factor gamma 1.03. So gamma, which is given by 1 over square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. Um, the question is telling you that that is equal to 1.03. What is v? And I think the way the question is worded, this is a good place to start using a notation that you see me use a lot in lecture because I it really simplifies writing down some of the things, which is the use of a unitless parameter that indicates speed. So here you see V being specified as a multiple of the speed of light. And there's a really common symbol that we use in um, for that for that specification. Uh, it's a beta. That, don't ask me why we are using beta for that. That's the standard notation. So a beta is defined this way. This parameter beta is defined as speed of whatever it is you're looking at divided by speed of light. So you could think of this as a speed in unit of C. And in lecture, I talked about how it's really common. Oh, I guess I talk about it in this way. Um, how it's really common for it people who work in special relativity to use the unit system where c is equal to one. Uh, I'm not going to use that because that tends to confuse people, but um, um, using this parameter beta is a way, nice way to transition um, between what you're used to, a basic SI unit system, to the units that are more convenient for modern physics, uh, the natural unit system. And you can already see this simplification here with uh, beta representing v over c, I can actually write gamma in a simplified way. Gamma is 1 over square root of 1 minus, instead of v over c squared, I can just write it as beta squared. No more nested fractions, just like that. And having written this, let me derive an expression that's going to be super useful um, in coming um, uh, questions and uh, that this is actually what I want you to talk more about in a small lecture today. So let me just do that derivation now and <laughs> later on I can just save the derivation. So this is a equation that relates one variable to another variable. The way it is presented to you, it defines the gamma in terms of beta. It's solved for gamma but the nature of the equation is um, you can uh, solve it for the other quantity. So let me do that. I'm going to um, square both sides. When I do that, I get gamma squared is equal to 1 over square root is gone, 1 minus beta squared. Assuming beta is less than 1, it usually is. Otherwise, you get imaginary things. Let's not deal with that. Okay, let's just solve for beta. Um, I think I need to multiply through by one minus the beta squared to, so that I don't have beta in denominator anymore. Let's see what happens. I have gamma squared times one minus, um, so minus gamma squared times beta squared. So minus gamma squared, beta squared, that's the left-hand side. Right hand side, this cancel by design is equal to one. Okay, um, I have to put gam, uh, the term with the beta in it by itself. So let me move this over to right, move this over to left, and imagine flipping it around so that I'm writing the beta term first. Gamma squared, beta squared is equal to uh, gamma squared minus one. And then multiply through by one over gamma squared, that'll get rid of this gamma squared term there. And then I'm going to plan to take the square root, or, or let me just do the square root now. So when you do all that, uh, this is the expression that you end up with for beta. Um, so 
the left hand side by design it'll end up being beta it'll actually give you the absolute value of beta so somehow if you are hoping beta will indicate either rightward movement or leftward movement then um, you will lose that information in distribution um, you'll have to uh, express it somehow other way and now on the right hand side i have gamma squared divided by gamma squared it's going to be one minus 1 divided by gamma squared minus 1 over gamma squared and then I'm taking square root so square root here and uh, that's it so um, beta according to that derivation I have beta is equal to square root of 1 minus 1 over gamma squared. And I'll tell you that I use this so much when I'm doing special relativity problems. Uh, I usually just have this memorized over time. I just, uh, um, without take, putting in any effort to actually memorize it, I just end up memorizing it because you say so many times that it's just like that. Um, now, so I could do this calculation um, with my calculator the usual way i can just plug in the numbers which is the usual way you would use calculator um, so you know i can say all right square root of one minus one divided by gamma squared can definitely do that and that will be the answer now uh, if you're using sage math sage math has some um, really wonderful tools that's uh, uh, that's nice so let me declare some variables to help me use this symbolic algebra tools. I mean, uh, declaring variables of beta and gamma. So what I have is the equation that gamma is equal to 1 divided by square root of 1 minus beta squared. This is the kind of the syntax for specifying equation. And the nice thing about uh, Sage math is it's a computer algebra system. It can do symbolic math. It can actually just uh, solve the equation for you. You know, I did this by hand. I didn't have to. I could uh, tell this to say solve this equation. I could also just type this up, but I already wrote it in. Solve this equation uh, for beta. And uh, let's see if it'll complain. Sometimes it complains. Uh, because computer algebra systems tend to do these kind of calculations really generally. So uh, sometimes it'll complain, oh, we need to know if a beta is positive or negative, or yeah. So uh, computation failed since the maximum requested yeah, additional information. So, oh, yeah. So it's asking, is gamma positive or negative? It's actually even bigger than one, but at a minimum, we know gamma is positive. So, so yeah, and in fact, I think if I simply say assume gamma greater than what, zero, it might still complain. Let's see. Oh, wait, it gives me an answer. Um, oh, all right. Um, I guess it doesn't um, mind that this expression here could result in imaginary expression, which is fine. But yeah, beta is equal to square root of. And the way it's expressed here right now, it's a square root of gamma squared minus 1, square root closed, divided by gamma. But when you work this all out, then um, then that's that. And it, this system can actually um, also plug in the numbers for you. So the underscore is the expression for the previous output, which is this. Let me get the, this uh, um, item here. So I get the equation that says beta, uh, let me say this is my solution. So that's my solution. And I can substitute in gamma. So solution substitute in gamma is equal to 1.03. And there it is. Uh, that's the answer I had before. I just wanted to show off some of the things you can do with the computer algebra system. Uh, 0 0.240. 0 0.240. Yeah, and I think the main reason I wanted to ask this question is um, just to show how large the speed of something has to be for relatively small relativistic effect. Um, <laughs> so, you know, here your speed is a quarter of the speed of light. This is like um, a little bit less than a hundred million meters per second. 
It's a kind of the speed that uh, macroscopic objects don't really reach. You can get that with the charged particles, microscopic objects. You we can accelerate it that fast. Now, with the pretty large relativistic speed, the length contraction or time dilation effect are only three percent. It's uh, um, yeah, it's uh, the kind of and this this is uh, what I want you to lecture on a little bit more. So I'll talk about them more when we get there. So. Um, 